Shakespeare must have read this treatise. One of the things that needs to be understood is that there were several, like many sword masters in this period. We have documentary evidence of several, but we only have treatises of three. The treatises of the three that we have are Degrassi, who originally wrote his treatise in Italian in 1570. It was then translated in 1594 by a chap who is described as IG Gentleman, not very useful particularly, but there are wonderful theories about who this particular IG Gentleman was. There's Saviello's Manual of 1595, which is reputed to be the first fencing manual that was actually written in English. And we're going to be going, coming back to Saviello's Manual a lot. And then we have Sav uh, Silver's Manual. He was an Englishman who wrote his manual in response to what he called the Italian invasion. He wrote his first book, um, Paradoxes of Defense, in 1599, and then he wrote a later one, Brief Instructions on My, on my Paradoxes of Defense, a little later. The London Masters of Defense was a corporation of masters which Henry VIII created back in 1540 which allowed English fencing masters as a corporation to study and teach uh, martial arts throughout England. So they had a monopoly on teaching martial arts throughout the country. The Italians arrive and they started quite frankly poaching their, <laughs> poaching their students because of course all things Italian became all horribly popular during the Renaissance period and especially during the Elizabethan period. So of course the London masters started getting rather upset with this particular situation and Saviolo, uh, sorry, Silver was the first, one of the first to put these to print in his Paradoxes of Defence. He objected to the way the Italians taught and he thought that they were quite frankly suicidal in their methods. There is information in there which is useful for sword play, but it's a great long political diatribe, quite, quite frankly. And there is quite a few references to Saviolo throughout there. In fact, some of the in, in, most interesting information we actually get about Saviolo and his interactions in London are actually from, from Silver. The Grassi's manual is, as I mentioned, um, based on a earlier manual of 1570. So it's an early period form. It's what's called a common form. It's a common Italian form and it primarily focuses on the use of the sword in defense. What we would call parries are used with the sword. Saviolo, when he's using his so using his sword, he primarily parries with the, with the off hand, the left hand, in all sorts of defenses against thrusts and cuts, which is quite frankly very unusual. He considers that the sword should be primarily used for attacking your, your opponent, while the off hand was used for defending defending yourself with. The connection between Shakespeare and the sword is a wonderful chap by the name of John Florio. John Florio was a linguist. He was also a bit of a playwright. And the reason why he's the connection is because he was a good friend of Saviolo. We suspect that he assisted or translated Saviolo's treatise, this one here, into English. Florio was also friends with a chap by the name of Ben Johnson, who was a playwright, of course. And Johnson was, of course, friends with Shakespeare. There's a social connection there which is made. Once you've read Saviolo's manual, reading Shakespeare's plays, you read them in an all new light. Shakespeare essentially must have read Saviolo's manual. Hamlet, for example, the final duel. If you have a look at the first folio, the final duel is supposed to be fought with single rapier and gauntlet or rapier and dagger. Saviolo's manual teaches nothing but rapier and gauntlet or rapier and dagger. Degrassi's manual teaches rapier and dagger, rapier and case of rapiers, which is two rapiers. It teaches rapier and rotella, square targe, all sorts of things. It teaches 12 different sort of weapon forms. Saviola's manual just teaches those two. The first folio for Hamlet has the duel with the two weapons which are mentioned in Saviola's manual. Only those two. As you like it. 
Touchstone mentions the different types of lie. They happen to line up exactly, well, very, very closely with the types of lie which Saviolo mentions in his second book in this treatise. To explain the books, well, we think of books as this is a book, that's a book. Books, in their case, they're divided up into the different sections. So you have two major sections, like big chapters. The second book, which is Of Honor and Honorable Quarrels, as indicated by the, the, the title page, was a dueling treatise, you could call it. It explains how a duel should be conducted, a duel of honor. The reasons that you should be getting into duels, the reasons you shouldn't be getting into duels, etc. and so on. In As You Like It, Touchstone describes the different types of lie. The lie was the reason that you would get into a duel with someone. Someone would give the lie and then the challenge would start, essentially. In Romeo and Juliet, Mercutio, when he is sta stabbed, talks about being turned to worm's meat. There is an image in Saviolo's treatise, this is a PDF of a facsimile of the original, where it has an image which has worm's meat in there in black and white. There are so many different places where there are correlations all the way through. Pieces of Saviolo's manual just keep popping up all the way through. Shakespeare must have read this treatise. 